in this lesson, we want to talk about the factor theorem. All right, so before we get into talking about the factor theorem, I want to make sure that you understand the remainder theorem, which was what we talked about in the last lesson. So if we have some polynomial function, let's call it f of x, okay? And it's divided by some linear factor, so let's call this x minus k. Again, the coefficient on x is 1, and the exponent on x is 1. So that's very important. So it's some linear factor, we call it x minus k, when we think about this generically. Now, if I divide f of x by x minus k, the result will be some quotient, which we call q of x, plus some remainder, which we call r. So we can rewrite our polynomial function f of x in this way. So we have this divisor x minus k times our quotient q of x plus our remainder r. Now, if this doesn't make any sense to you, we'll look at an example in a minute. And also, let me just give you a quick example with some whole numbers so that it makes more sense. So let's say that you had the number 7 and you divided it by the number 3. So 7 is your dividend, 3 is your divisor, the quotient is 2, okay? But then you have a remainder of 1, okay? So what we would say here is that I could write 7 using this format as what? Well, my divisor here is x minus k, my divisor here is 3, okay? Then times, my quotient here is q of x, my quotient here is 2. Then plus, my remainder here is r, my remainder here is 1. So it's quite simple when you look at this with whole numbers. We have our divisor, 3, times our quotient, 2, which is 6, plus our remainder, 1, which gives us 7. Okay, so that's all we're really doing. It's the same thing. We just got to find a way to relate this to a harder concept when we work with these polynomial functions. Now, the reason this is important to write it in this format is that it makes it crystal clear about the remainder theorem, which tells us if we evaluate a polynomial function at some number, let's just call it k, so f of k is how we would notate that, the result is r. And the reason for this is simple. f of k is equal to, again, if I plug in a k for x, you'd have k minus k times q of k plus r. Well, this is zero. So you can erase this and put zero here. Zero times whatever this is is zero. So you can erase this. And zero plus r is just r. So f of k equals r. That's what this tells us here, and that's the remainder theorem. Okay. So to see a quick example, let's look at this guy real fast. We have f of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 21x plus 18. If we want to find out what is f of 2, well, of course, you can plug a 2 in everywhere there's an x, evaluate, and you've got your answer. But you could also say, well, what is the remainder from dividing this guy by, let's say, g of x is x minus this number here, whatever it is. So x minus 2 in this particular case. So the remainder from that would be the same as f of 2, okay? So the way we're going to do this is with synthetic division. So I'm going to put a 2 here. Whatever this number is, that's what you put there. And then I'm going to grab these coefficients only. Remember, if you're missing a power of x, you got to put a 0 in there as a placeholder. So I'm not missing any powers there, so I'm good to go. I'm just going to grab my coefficients. This guy's a 1, this guy's a 2, this guy's a negative 21, and this guy's an 18. Okay, so you remember how to do this. Draw a little bar down here. Go ahead and drop this down. I'm going to scroll down and get some room. I'll come back. So drop this down. So now we're going to multiply. 2 times 1 is 2. Then we add. 2 plus 2 is 4. Then we multiply. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 21 plus 8 is negative 13. So then we multiply, 2 times negative 13 is negative 26. And lastly, we're going to add, 18 plus negative 26 is negative 8. So this is your remainder, and so that tells me that f of 2 is negative 8. But what we can also do is take this answer here. This would be your quotient, right? And the way you get this is that our polynomial, let me just scroll up real quick. I'm just going to erase this and keep the answer part. Let me just bring this up here so it's all on the same screen for us and come back up here. I had this guy divided by this guy. So we always know it's of the form x minus k. So to take these numbers and make sense of them, all you do is you take this degree of the polynomial, in this case, the highest exponent is a 3, this would just be 1 less. So this is the coefficient for, in this case, to be x squared, because 3 minus 1 is 2, okay? So 1 would be the coefficient for x squared. Then you would have plus your 4x, and then minus your 13, okay? So this would be your quotient. So let's erase this real quick. We know the remainder is negative 8, but again, I could write this. Let me just kind of scooch this down so we can really draw this point home. So f of x could be written as this times 
this divisor here, and I can change the order around, it doesn't really matter, and then we can put minus eight here, okay? So if you pause the video and you go through and multiply this by this, and then subtract away eight from that, you'll get back to this exactly, okay? Now, if you think about what is f of two, again, when it's in this format, with the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder, you see clearly you just get the remainder, because if I plug in a two there, two minus two is zero, zero times whatever this is is zero, I'm left with just negative eight. So again, we say f of two is negative eight. So hopefully that drives home what the remainder theorem is and how it works. Now, Let's move on and talk about the factor theorem, which again, if you understand the remainder theorem is very simple. So if f of x is equal to x minus k, again, our divisor, which is a linear factor, times this q of x, which is the quotient plus r, and we find that f of k equals zero, well then what? It means that this times this gives me this, right? There's no remainder or a remainder of zero. Okay, so that tells me that x minus k is a factor of f of x. We also know from the last lesson that if f of k equals zero, then k is known as a zero, or you could say it's a root or a solution, or really they're the x-intercepts if you're talking about k being some real number. Now, let's look at a couple of examples. Let's say that we have the same f of x, but we're gonna change our value for k. In this case, it's gonna be three. So f of x again is x cubed plus two x squared minus 21x plus 18. Now we wanna know what is f of three. If f of three is zero, then we can say that x minus this value, x minus three, is a factor, okay? So let's see what f of three is. So I'm gonna say three here, and I'll take my one, my two, my negative 21, and my 18. Let me get some room going just so we're not jammed up on here. Drop this down and get started. Three times one is three, two plus three is five. Three times five is 15. Negative 21 plus 15 is negative six. And then three times negative six is negative 18. 18 plus negative 18 is zero. Okay, so the remainder here is zero. So that tells me, since f of three is zero, that x minus, again, whatever this number is, in this case, it's three, x minus three is a factor, okay? So x minus three is a factor of this guy right here, okay? So let's scroll down and look at a couple more problems here. So we have f of x equals, we have x cubed plus 4x squared minus 22x plus 20. So we have g of x equals x minus 2, and we just want to know, is this a factor? Okay, so again, you just take this number right here. As long as it's in the format of x minus some number. If it's not in this format, you got to change it to where it's x minus some number. We'll see an example of that in a moment. But basically, I can again just take 2, put it out here, and then grab my coefficients, so 1, 4, negative 22, and 20, and I'm just going to see, is the remainder 0? If it is, then x minus 2 is a factor. If it's not, then x minus 2 is not a factor. So let's go ahead and drop this down. 2 times 1 is 2, 4 plus 2 is 6. 2 times 6 is 12. Negative 22 plus 12 is negative 10. 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. 20 plus negative 20 is 0. So there's no remainder here. So I can say, if we kind of go back up here, that x minus 2 is in fact a factor, right? Because we can say that f of 2 is equal to 0. All right, let's take a look at a longer one. So we have f of x equals x to the fifth power plus 2x to the fourth power minus 6x cubed minus 12x squared minus 16x minus 32. Is g of x, which is equal to x plus 3, is that a factor? Again, you want this in the form of x minus k to make this work. You have a plus there. If you see that, you've got to change it, okay? It's a very common mistake to just put three out there and then to get the wrong answer, okay? So you want to make sure you change this and just say this is equal to x minus a negative three. So that's in that format. And then you grab whatever this number is. Minus whatever this number is, that's what you're going to say. So is f of negative three equal to zero? So that's a question mark. Again, we're just gonna use some synthetic division. So I'm gonna say that I have negative three, grab my coefficients, I've got a one, a two, a negative six, a negative 12, a negative 16, and a negative 32. And a lot of these problems are gonna get quite tedious, so you just have to be prepared for that. Okay, so let's scroll down, get some room going. Let's drop this to here. Negative three times one is negative three. Two plus negative three is negative one. Okay, so negative three times negative one is going to be three. 
Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Negative 12 plus 9 is negative 3. And then negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Negative 16 plus 9 is negative 7. And negative 3 times negative 7 is 21. Negative 32 plus 21 is going to give me negative 11. So this is not 0. Okay, this is not 0. So f of negative 3 is negative 11. And so I can say that this g of x, which is x plus 3, or you could say x minus a negative 3, is not a factor of f of x. Okay, let's look at the same f of x, but we're going to change kind of our divisor. We're going to call it h of x now, and now it's x plus 2. So same thing. In this case, it's plus. So change it to x minus a negative 2. Very important you do that. It's, again, it's a common mistake. I can't say that enough. So you want to take your negative 2. And again, just see if the remainder from this guy is 0. So we would have a 1, a 2, a negative 6, a negative 12, a negative 16, and a negative 32. Okay, so that's everything. So let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and drop this and get started. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. 2 plus negative 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. Negative 6 plus 0 is negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 6 is 12. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. Negative 16 plus 0 is negative 16. Negative 2 times negative 16 is going to be 32. Negative 32 plus 32 is 0. So that's your remainder. It's 0, right? Meaning you don't have one. So that tells me that x plus 2 is a factor, right? So you can say h of x is a factor of f of x. All right, so let's look at another common problem that occurs in this section. So basically what's going to happen here is they're going to give you one factor and they expect you to find the other ones, okay? So we have f of x equals x cubed minus 7x squared plus 14x minus 8, and our factor is x minus 2. So what that means is that if I plugged in a 2 for x, so if I had f of 2, this is 0, right? They're telling us that, okay? So what I can say is that if I plug in a 2 there, and I do my synthetic division, so I have a 1, a negative 7, a 14, and a negative 8. I'll do this, I'll get a remainder of 0, and I'll take that quotient, and then I'll try to factor that further. Okay, so let's go ahead and crank this out. So I'll drop this down. 2 times 1 is 2, negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. 14 plus negative 10 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8, negative 8 plus 8 is 0. Okay, so I don't need this part. And again, when we think about this, if I go back up, this guy has a degree of 3. So the answer will have a degree of 2. So if I erase this, I'll say that my answer here is just x squared, and then minus 5x, and then plus 4. Okay, so that's how this would go. So this times this would give me this, right? I could say f of x is equal to this, right? We already know that. Now, let's think about factoring this guy. So this is a quadratic, very easy to factor. So we have x here and x here. And we need two integers that sum to negative 5 and have a product of positive 4. So we can get negative 4 and negative 1, right? Because negative 4 times negative 1 is 4. And then negative 4 plus negative 1 is negative 5. So negative 4 and negative 1. And let me write that in a more compact manner. So I'm just going to say f of x here is equal to x minus 4 times x minus 1 times x minus 2. 